Hello, sometimes I have to make some parts on the CNC, which I won't repeat, I don't need to make them parametric, so I just need to make them fast. In this video I'll show you this small piece of aluminum with a couple of holes, the fastest way possible, or at least the fastest way that I know how to make it. So let's get started, let's go to FreeCAD, I'm in the part design workbench, I will create a new body, create a new sketch on the XY plane, let's go back to the sketch, it's 50 millimeters wide by 114.95 long, so let's draw a rectangle, here comes in handy the new feature of the 0.22 FreeCAD, I can simply write here the dimensions, press tab 50 and everything is already constraint close the sketch but it 15 millimeters you can see here the thickness of the material so i now have the shape let's drill all the holes there are four holes which will be threaded with an m8 thread and two holes through which an m6 screw must pass so let's first draw the four m8 threaded holes we will select the top face create a new sketch create four circles make all of them equal press the E key after selecting all of them and now let's go to Google and search M8 thread drill size for M8 you can see here drill size for tapping standard metric threads is 6.8 millimeters so select one of them and if I press the R key as usual as I'm used to it won't work the new shortcut for the radius is K followed by R and if I want to enter a diameter constraint it's K followed by O. And the new shortcuts don't seem so intuitive to me but the easiest way to learn them is whenever you need to do something go to the menu sketch go to constraints and here you have a list of all the constraints and in the right you have the shortcut keys. By using them one after another you will remember all the shortcuts let's hope FreeCAD won't change them again too soon. So all the circles are equal I will select the one on the left press K and O for a diameter and it was 6.8 millimeters press enter all the circles are equal select the center of these two press H for an horizontal constraint these two a vertical constraint let's go back to the sketch I have 40 millimeters between the centers of these two circles so select the centers press L key for a horizontal distance constraint and it's 40 millimeters and then I have a 45.8 between the center of the right circle to the edge so let's use some external geometry but I don't have the shortcut for the external geometry here so let's go back to sketcher tools create external geometry click on this line there probably is a shortcut but I'm not searching for it now press L again for a horizontal distance constraint 45.8 I know that these four circles are in the center of the piece so since the piece is 50, I will press I for a vertical distance constraint, 25 millimeters, and now they are in the middle, you can see them green fully constrained. I still have to place these two. First of all, the distance between the center and the edge is 5.8, so I'll select the bottom point of the external geometry, the center of this circle, press L and type 5.8 millimeters. You can see they both moved, as you remember we have already set up a vertical constraint between the centers of these two circles. On the horizontal we have a 6.5 millimeters distance constraint, press I, 6.5 and do the same for the top one. And now everything is green, they are fully constrained, I will close the sketch and now make a pocket through all. I can see some errors here, I believe they are because I'm working on a development version. So now I have all the holes for the M8 thread, I'm not going to make the thread on the CNC, I'm going to tap the holes after milling them on the CNC, so I don't have to take care of the thread now. Let's make the other two holes, the M6 holes, which also have a bevel here. So let's first make the holes, select the face again, I don't care if I'm attaching sketches to faces, it's a one-time project, a very quick project, so I don't really Really care. Draw the two circles, make them horizontal, make them equal, set the distance between them to 50. And now select the center of the first one, press I and 25 so they are centered. Now let's give them a diameter so K and O. And because I want an M6 screw to pass through these holes, I will type a 6.1 diameter now we still have to place them from left to right let's look at the sketch i have an 8.15 millimeters 
so select the center press L if you only select one point it will default to the distance between the center and the origin be it vertical or horizontal so it's 8.15 now the holes are fully determined the circles I will close the sketch make another pocket through all I still have to make the bevel for that you can see in here I've searched for M6 flathead dimensions because that's what the plate will be fastened with in the table M6 a head diameter of 11.2 I'm going to use 12 a little bit larger here and the height K of 3.6 now let's select the top circles of these two holes press on the chamfer button I will go to the type and select two distances for the first size which is the diameter I'm going to use 12 so it's 12 minus the radius divide everything by 2 for the second size which is the height here I have 3.6 millimeters and now the M6 flathead screw should fit almost perfectly just a little bit wider the hole in the piece is a little bit wider so this is the part it is ready I might also chamfer the edges but the requirements state that it should be simply cut so no chamfer whatsoever let's select the body and go to the path workbench surprise there is no path workbench in the Freeca 0.22 it has been renamed to cam which is more intuitive if you are a new user but if you got used to using the path workbench cam is going to confuse you a little at the beginning let's create a new job i will reduce the extensions to zero go to tools click on add i'm going to use a 3.175 which is a one eighth of an inch for the horizontal and the vertical speed i'm going to use a speed of 800 for both of them and a spindle speed of 12,500 remove the default tool I haven't worked on aluminum for a long time so I'm not very sure but these are some values that I know that work on my machine with this type of cutter head so it's better to go a little slower to avoid breaking tool bits or damaging the piece or so on close the newly created job and now let's first create a helix you can see it drills all the holes select a step down of 0.5 millimeters the operation tab is that should be start from outside starting from outside helps keep the diameter correct if the hole is bigger than two diameters of the cutter bit otherwise it doesn't really matter click ok after creating the holes i need to make these two chamfers i don't have a cutter bit well i have but i don't want to lose time changing the cutter bit so i will select these two faces and i will go to the 3d surface which for this type of surface the path should be ready in just a couple of milliseconds but freecad still doesn't know how to make 3d surfaces as it should i have to use an offset cut pattern what I need to do is change the step over to a very low value let's say 5 and now it takes longer it already takes longer I believe 3d surface is still not usable in FreeCut you can see 12.49 seconds just to calculate the path for these two simple chamfers for this it works but otherwise you still have to move to blender you can find my video about using blender for milling 3d surfaces on my channel so now let's optimize this a little you can see it's cuts a circle then goes up goes to the other hole cuts a circle and so on this is not a good thing I will remove the second face click on apply again you can see there are still up and down movements between the layers I don't want that so I go to the operation tab click on optimize step over transitions and now I can click ok I'm sure the path will be correct so now let's do the same for the second hole I go to the operation select the surface click on copy the operation in the job double click on it go to base geometry remove the first face select the second one click on add and now I can close the 3d surface operation and wait for it to compute I can see it takes around 7 or 6.5 seconds let's hide the helix to make sure they work okay and one last operation that I need to do to make this piece is an outside profile so I go to the job click on the profile go to depth and modify the default step down because it's too much when cutting aluminum so I'll go with a 0.5 step down now I can export the job but prior to exporting the job I have to double click it go to the output select the correct 
processor and select an output file otherwise it will save it in the working folder of FreeCAD which sometimes you might find the file sometimes you might not and it's not a good practice to, to save files there click on ok the annoying thing when modifying anything is that as you can see it takes a very long time because it recomputes everything but that's the way FreeCAD works moving on to real life this little piece is going to be very difficult to hold on to so I will split this job into two files the one with a helix and the two surfaces to make the chamfer and another one with a profile because after cutting the holes I will use these holes to hold the piece down with some screws to the table and I can then mill the profile easily so select the profile toggle the active state or press P then X select the job again click on export it is ready now double click on it go to the output file modify the name otherwise it will be overwritten without any warning so you need to make sure you change the output file name every time now select the profile press p x now select all three operations before press p x again and you can see i have only the profile left select the job click on export and now i can go to the cnc and mill this piece let's see what will be the results of this quick work as you can see the piece came out exactly as it should and after using a hand uh, thread maker i don't know how to call it i'm not sure how to call it in english but after making the thread by hand in just a couple of minutes here is the final part this way of working is very useful when you have to create just one little thing that you are not going to reuse anytime soon thank you for watching and see you next time